the new channel. the new channel hashtag TNC now the views opinions and insights expressed in the following shows are those of the host producers guests and viewers they do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel viewer discretion is advised hello and welcome to the new channel our passion transforms a community that sees all things new i'm alpha sanford and i am streaming live from boston massachusetts good morning good evening good afternoon mabuhai welcome to once a teacher always a teacher It's Alpha Sanford again, welcoming you to another episode of Once a Teacher, Always a Teacher. For today's episode, I am very excited because I feel like we have a legend here who's going to be sharing with us her wisdom in terms of how parenting can definitely support your child's true calling. She is uh, um, a consultant, an author. She's been a founder of many, many organizations. And for the longest time, she has been the assistant professor at the De La Salle University College of Education in Manila. She was actually even awarded the 20 year teaching award in August of 2016. So she's been in the education field for a long time, right? Um, and our guest today has a very wonderful perspective when it comes to parenting from her viewpoint as a child, a daughter, a parent, a mom, and as an educator. Regarding her background, she has a wonderful um, educational experiences that includes finishing her master's degree in early childhood and, and elementary education at the Bank Street College of Education in New York City. She also had her bachelor's degree in psychology minor in elementary education from the Assumption College in Makati City. And uh, um, she was a candidate in finishing her PhD in executive program in educational leadership and management from the De La Salle University in Manila. So I guess without further ado, I want you to really take down notes and really listen to the wisdom 
of our very special guest, teacher Maria Carolina Gustilo de Ocampo, or as we will be calling her today, teacher Maricar. All right. So let's welcome teacher Maricar. Hi, teacher Maricar. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you for having me. And it's so nice that you're on the other side of the world and we're talking as if we're just neighbors. That's right. Thank you and for that warm introduction. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. It's, it's really such an honor, uh, Teacher Marika, to have you on the show. I feel like this is going to be the show for me, but... <laughs> You know, as a parent and as an Asian parent, we are yeah. always wanting to have the best for our children. And at the same time, you know, looking out for uh, what's going to be good for them, right? Yes, yes. yes. So, yeah, yeah. So how are you doing today, Teacher Marikar? I'm fine. Thank you. Um, I'm enjoying teaching up to now. I, I'll be having class uh, uh -huh. uh, this evening. Uh, my time in Manila, uh -huh. and um, it's exciting. A new term has going to, is going to start. I'll be teaching uh, two subjects in the master's program in early childhood education, and nice. um, it's all online. It's because um, a lot of our teachers, um, I have uh, at least three teachers who are out of the country. So uh -huh. uh, one is in Bali, one is in China, one is in Korea, but they all take up courses in in DLS. And then I'm also doing a lot of um, webinars for different mm -hmm. associations. And that keeps me busy in spite of my uh, reality that I'm already in my senior years. But it, it, I think it's, it's a, a misnomer because I, I believe that you feel old even if, even if you're 10 years old. It's in your mindset. So, right. yeah, and I think meeting you and um today and meeting all these young people i i i'm full of hope that uh, even if i'm not going to be here my grandchildren will have a good world and a good place for them because you're still here you know trying to share your opinions and your ideas about how to make the world a better place to live in that's great yeah actually teacher marikar i really applaud you because you have an Instagram, you have, you know, you know how to use the StreamYard, the Facebook, you know all of these things. And the fact that, you know, you are teaching many would-be teachers and leaders, education leaders around the world at your age. That's pretty wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. No, I think, um, as I said, um, I will continue until God calls me. So... Okay. Um, and I think God is telling me not yet. So I said, thank you. And I will pursue. And I, the nice part as an alpha um, mm -hmm. is really um, what you like to do. It's like you, you're enjoying this. I can see it. The, the passion and the radi mm -hmm. you, you radiate the glow of joy. And that's oh, how cool. everyone should see their work. Mm -hmm. If you're not happy with your work, please don't. Change your work, please, uh, because if you don't radiate the joy of your work, um, it, it's not going to help yourself and it's not going to help the other person. So. Oh, I love that. I think yeah. every single uh, educator right now here in the U.S. or around the world, yes. they, they need to actually listen to what you just said, Teacher Maricar. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, I, I just wanted to share with you my journey. Yes, and, yeah, let's talk about that. Education, yeah. yeah um, let's talk about that. Well, girls' school in 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 the in the Philippines, and then after college, uh, I was blessed enough to go to Bank Street in New York and spend. Mm -hmm. I finished my master's there and spent two years teaching, and then we went. I came home and then I got married. Then I left again for San Francisco, which. Okay. Um, my two kids were my no, my son was born, but my daughter was born there. So I was okay. able to do yeah in San Francisco, okay. and I was able to teach also in in San Francisco for a year and a half. So it was great. Um, 
that was during the 80s and it was really fun and then um and then we came back home um during uh, during the 90s 1980s 1990s and then mm -hmm. and then after that the rest is history i'm teaching now etc but the, the nice part i think of of this journey is that i was able to meet a lot of people a lot of mentors uh, i was able to meet um two three important people that really affected my educational philosophy one of them is ken robinson uh, mm -hmm. and you know him i'm sure he's a very well known author and but sad to say he passed away last year yes and then, um, yes and then of course howard gardner mm -hmm. of project zero which i was also able to attend um i was just like a you know a fan and a starstruck person just listening to him speak and then right. the other one is mel levine who also is a very well-known art author but he passed away also and mm. that gave me a perspective of what i want education to be um mm. i really want education as a as a stepping stone to who you want to be as a as an individual um i don't i don't say please take up medicine huh please take up <laughs> nursing you know like jokoy take up nursing <laughs> huh? and, and everything and i was saying to myself it really sounds it really sounds so true because a lot of parents say you know mom what should i take up you yes know? yeah and then when they ask when they ask you as for example your daughter asks, what should i take up i hope you don't say doc being a doctor or being a nurse um, the best thing for me uh when they asked me i said i want to teach and they mm -hmm. say they said, why and i said because i like to be with young children etc etc so my parents said of course my sisters would say why don't you take your mba take up your master's in psychology i said no i want to take mm -hmm. master's in teaching and okay. this, uh, and because of that my parents were very supportive even if they did not understand what I wanted to do with it. And the, the nice part is that they trusted our choices. Oh. And one thing I think also with female children, we were, we were five daughters, so okay. we all had different careers. So, uh, and my father just said, we will, I will support you in that, in any educational, uh, you know, what that you, you you know you want to pursue mm -hmm. i will support you and then so the nice part is that he was able to you know us in our educational training uh, but i also had to work part-time for my pocket money i was a daycare mm -hmm. you know, after, mm -hmm. after school program teacher i was a babysitter in sloan catering for all the doctors there and um yeah. Yeah, and I was working in in Bloomingdale's as a gift wrapper during Christmas. So I really had a diverse. I loved it. I think experience is better than going to school, and so from then on, um, when we came back, that's also how I want wanted my children to to be. I want so, them. Yeah. yeah. Go so, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you pro you were inspired by how your parents encourage you to yes. pursue what you truly love, which is mm -hmm. early childhood. Yes. And this has been like your um, advocacy for the last few years, right? Yes. With your children yes. and with any parents that you come across with, yes. right? Yes, yes. Yeah. very much. But yeah, teacher Maricar, take yes. me back. I heard yes. earlier that, you know, you went to New York and you work as a daycare, but what really inspired you to become an early childhood educator? And why out of all of the courses, you told your parents, I want to be an early childhood educator. What was the fire in you? What, really uh, what, what, what was the, what was the ember? What was the, you yeah, know, the, what was the fire in you? Yeah. What really made you want to go for that? I think the, I had an experience working with young children in my college years. I I did volunteer work for the the schools of Assumption in the different areas, like in in Pasay and then in in 
Iloilo, and then also mm -hmm. Baguio, we were exposed to that. And then we over, I was also exposed to a very new school called the Early Learning Center by Nina Limuson. She was one of the first um, preschool uh, owners that came back from the States also. And she it was mm -hmm. a progressive school. And it was a wonderful experience. I said, I want to be like that. So from then on, Nina was also a member and she said, go to Bank Street. So I said, okay, go. I didn't even know what it was, but I said, I'm going to go. So, so and then um, the nice part is that there were people who were there to give me, uh, you know, strength and give me support and give me the rah, rah, rah that you needed. Because, you know, if you don't have those people, there might be times when in you lose focus and you lose mm. direction yeah mm -hmm. so um, the nice part in bank street they had a men system so i had a, a teacher mentor who i talked to every month or every two two weeks that was a long time ago but that mentoring was wonderful then and yeah. that's what i have to do this at, at you know what i'm doing right now in la salle i do mentoring so they come and they call me up now they text me, they viber me, you know, they Instagram me, they personal message me. But to tell the truth, I don't say no. I just said, I'm here to listen. And I really, mm -hmm. really want, you know, even if I can't give you the answer, a listening ear is the best. It's a, yes. it's a beginning, it's a beginning, especially now with what's yeah. happening in the COVID. Yes, oh, um, so teacher Maricar, um, for those who don't know, like, you know, they have the interest of coming and studying in abroad. Yes, Can you yes, just tell yes. a little bit in terms of your experiences, yeah. you know, yes. studying for your master's degree in New York City? How is it I like? Know. Yeah, how is it like? Um, I know it's been a few years, but. Well, no, no, like, it's, very, it's very fresh yeah. in my mind. <laughs> okay, tell us, yes. Yeah. How is it like? Um, I, I'm yeah, just all of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. From well, from Manila, of course. I I go to the school and um, I I filled in the application form and I was mm -hmm. um, able to was able to get. They we didn't have internet or we didn't have Streamyard, so yeah. we had a telephone call. Right, I had a telephone call from from Bank Street and they interviewed me online. I mean, on on the telephone and then. I was able to send in my requirements. And then when I went to the States, I won um, a student visa. And mm -hmm. then um, and then, then um, if I, I finished uh, in about a year and a half or two years, then after that, they gave me another two years to right. teach. So that was about four years. So I think um, I always tell my students, even now, because a lot of them want to study abroad. Right. Mm -hmm. Just keep on writing, telling them that you are this. Sell yourself in a sense and make mm -hmm. you make yourself look so good that they want you to have to have you in their school. And tell them that you want to learn because when you come back to the Philippines, you will implement whatever um, whatever you have learned from them. And that's also what I've learned. I said mm -hmm. you can go. I, I always tell my children, spread your wings. My daughter spent four years in New York also. Mm -hmm. But she came back home because she said, mm -hmm. you know, Mom, America was the land that I was born in, but the Philippines mm -hmm. home. So wow. she's here working. And then my, my son also is wanted to also wanted to study abroad, but you know, it didn't happen. But he still said I wouldn't want really to stay there. Not because she mm -hmm. doesn't want it's, it, it's just that um learning something from another culture and coming home and applying it to our country is the best form of learning mm. so that's also what i i, I want uh, parents and other um educators out there to encourage learning outside to go out mm -hmm. and find out who you are especially your culture you know, mm -hmm. because people say, oh carolina you speak very good english i said yeah i mean i remember that comment you know when i was in when i was in school you speak so well and you write very well i said yes because i was taught in english i wasn't taught in filipino and wow. 
So now um there is a very very sad article on um on um about the learning delays or mm -hmm. the learning poverty that mm -hmm. is um, that is, um I'm, that I'm reading about not only in the Philippines but also around the world even in the United States that kids have lost two years so yes yes but we cannot keep on but but we cannot say okay this year we're gonna put it down on you you got to have all of this mm -hmm. oh you have to teach them how to be human beings that's the most mm -hmm. important okay they have lost two years of connections they have lost two years of relationships mm -hmm. they need they need mm -hmm. to know how to be kind and mm -hmm. how to be fair, you know how to be a friend you know so i always tell even with my students in, in the master I'll, you know i can give you all four fourth die is great right but that will that make you happy yes because yeah it will not make them happy but what makes them happy is when they have realizations of what they can do and mm -hmm. how can they mm -hmm. so my, my 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 life in new york was really a, a nice transition and then mm -hmm. when i came back home, it was another transition and of course i got married and i had children and it's I, i'm just so blessed really yes um, it's so really yeah. yeah and 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 i feel that um i should not complain because there's really no reason to complain but i think i should give more of what mm -hmm. i have of what little i have or what i can give to the point that you know i can make another person happy or make another person mm -hmm. feel good about themselves that's that's, right. that's amazing teacher maricar i yeah. love what i heard from you earlier about you know teaching our children um you know how to be human beings was that how your parents taught you is that how they brought you up let's yes. talk about your parents because yeah you know I feel yeah, my, like, yeah 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 let's talk my about parents that. were very wonderful human beings um okay. my father was a neurosurgeon and okay. my and my mom was a housewife okay. but that is a she was a housewife she had a life you know um she had five daughters and uh -huh. she raised up raised, raised up uh raised her five daughters very well uh -huh. um of course i was born during the time when children were not heard yeah but yes. sad, but i don't know if it's sad for my father or happy for uh -huh. us we were able to discuss so many things during the uh -huh. dinner table. At, you know all the ideas all these five women or six women were talking and talking and talking and my poor dad was just weeping at me. and then and then and then <laughs> we would ask an opinion he would ask an opinion and we would ask dad what do you think he's, he's just say i agree with you or i don't agree with you. and then but then i realized he was just listening to all of us he was listening to our personalities etc and of course i i realized that he's profession come, came first he was a neurosurgeon so I, I i always asked my mom how come i don't see dad on christmas or on new year or on his birthday and he said dad is working i said why so i realized for the past how many years that dad would do service um mm -hmm. uh, would operate on an, a patient that can't afford so mm -hmm. on his birthday on christmas day and on new year's day he was mm -hmm. not with us uh, he was in the operating room helping um, in, an indigent patient who cannot afford or needed that operation so so and when i was growing up we would have one sack of rice one mm -hmm. egg of mango and then how many you know how many lichons you know as i said <laughs> where did this come from and, and mom said that's the way the patients of your dad uh, you know show Appreciation, mm -hmm. they food, etc. So then I realized that's how my parents wanted us, you know, to realize that we are blessed, but also we mm -hmm. can share, and mm -hmm. people will share what they can. It doesn't have to be monetary. It can it can be in any form of kindness, any form of you know um, being there. Uh, mm -hmm. My parents were amazing people, and one thing i realized also i mean i learned from them is prayer 
is what really brought them together. So wow. they would pray every night. I would hear the rosary, and my, you know, my mother would say out the, and then I would hear Romy. That's the name of my father. Romy answer. Okay, my father would answer. <laughs> he would be falling asleep, and then they would say the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's the longest. I said, oh my, God. oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I said to myself, I, I guess it's the prayers and trust to each other and. And knowing what was good and what was fair for all and and for us, for their daughter, for, for their daughter. And we also adopted a, bro a brother because we didn't have okay. a brother. So we adopted a baby boy, and now he's in his fifties already. Mm. So it's um, my home. It's a sim it's a simple home, but we had so many wonderful. I think all of us have beautiful stories to share. And That's I'm just, right. And just I'm just so happy that. And be unable to share with you today. Yeah. Wow. I yeah. feel like uh, um, I want to capture everything that you had just mentioned about your parents. But let me just summarize what I heard, Teacher Marita. Yes. yes. I feel like, based from what I heard, that uh, your dad's charitable and his love for humankind is what really brought you to education yeah and what i also heard is those dinner you know uh dated women you know or young girls during that time um really um help you flourish and really follow your passion in life right yes and how yes. your dad listened to each of the personalities of his girls around the table is is that how uh you were molded is that how you were brought up yes. is that the impact of your parents in terms of who you are and yes. how you have followed your true calling in education yes yes very true teacher alpha i uh, miss alpha sorry what did you teach her alpha that's how it is i think if we have very good models like mm -hmm. our parents or our grandparents or a mentor that you can look up to they can really affect us in so mm -hmm. many ways and i think our parents are our first teachers right. so yeah. so they're the ones who model the behavior and i really think i believe in walking your talk um, yeah. you can keep on talking saying you have to be kind you have to be good you have to uh, uh. but if you don't do it mm -hmm. i mean the, the children won't understand but if you even if you don't say this is a kind gesture, but you go to, a, mm -hmm. you know, when I enter the classroom and I see this little boy really having a hard time and just get in the corner, I walk and I go down to their level and I say, mm -hmm. I put, I put my hand on his hand and I say, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Then he looks at me, no, okay. Would you like me to stay with you? And then he says, no. Okay. So, um, would you like me to go? He says, yes. But if you need me, I'm right here beside. So I think mean, that's also how my parents were. They did not um, say everything is, is going to be okay. Everything is fine. Everything's mm -hmm. not everything's okay. There will be days that are. I'm sorry. I'm going to use the word bad word, but um, shit. You know. <laughs> you call it as it is, teacher Marika. Yeah, you know, yeah, we all have those days, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but at the end of the day it's not really that bad it's also your perspective and your mindset that's sure. also yeah. you know uh, if, if uh, i that's why i love carl dweck when she says it's your not yet moment in your mm -hmm. life it's not, not yet, yet. <laughs> yeah not yet but it yeah. will come you know and yes. so i love i love her 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 mindset um her theory that says you know you have to have a growth mindset or a fixed mindset a fixed mindset is stuck i'm sorry it's that's stuck. right but the growth mindset is, I'm not yet there, but maybe I can try tomorrow, you know, and maybe it's going to work, you know. That's why even now, you know, I'm still learning about all of these tech, um, tech, you know, techy things, but, you know, not yet. Maybe tomorrow I'll be okay, you know, and uh, I will not just lose it. Of course, there are days I lose it. And I, I call up my children, I can't find my file. I said, and she said <laughs> it's still there. I said, I can't find it. I said, not to worry. <laughs> we call your steps okay 
I have found it. Thank you. And then I closed the phone. <laughs> and they tell me, you found it. Yes, that's why I closed the phone. You know, But I think um, it is our way of looking at things. And I think it's so important to give your daughter, how old is she? My daughter is 15 years old. Whoa. She's entering sophomore. Such a wonderful age. I wish I still I was a sophomore in high school. I had so much fun. <laughs> no, honestly, I mean, high school was fun. Um, my classmates in high school are still my classmates. Uh -huh. um, and we, we celebrated our 50th uh, golden high school reunion last year. Oh my goodness. Wow. wow. That's, and, that's and they all look great. Yeah. I said, I said to myself, Including you. <laughs> Including you, Mr. Marika, right? You. No, but I have friends who are really slim and into yoga. And I said, ah, no, 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 no. They, 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 they are ladies of leisure. They, you know, they, they take care of their grandchildren, etc. Me, I want to work. And, and they mm -hmm. say, but you stop working. I said, no, I'll, I'll go insane if I, if I, if I don't stop, if I mean, if I stop working. So, yeah, which is why you're here, right? I know, I know. Which is why so, you're here. So, Alf, I was going to tell you that um, it's really my parents who helped mm -hmm. me become who I am, and I'm ever grateful. And then when I married my husband, we both had the same uh, culture and the mm -hmm. same thing. You know, system and to tell the truth even marrying a foreigner for example or an American like my sister's married to an American you know it, it really depends also on you know your your mindset and your belief system right. it doesn't have it doesn't have to be because you're Asian or you're American mm -hmm. your culture is this way you can find a way to um to align it and to make right. it good yeah yes. bring yeah. out the strength of the Asian culture and bring out the strength of the of the American culture, and your daughter will be awesome. Yeah, thank you. So, Teacher Marikar, I have uh, two questions for you. Sure, sure. Two sure. scenarios. Yes. Uh, so, first scenario: What if we have like a set of parents here who are who are not as economically blessed as you have been, and they view or they try to steer their children? in taking a course that may not be as economically profitable in the long run. Let's just say, for example, you know, uh, being an actress or performing arts, right? Yes, yes. Uh, what would be your advice to parents like that? Yeah, I think that um, it's it's very important for, for parents um, to understand that be because of um you need money to go to school i mean as of now mm -hmm. <laughs> the way i see it um yes you do need money but you also need um a very very uh positive way of looking at education mm -hmm. i've been looking i've been i've been you know mentoring a lot of my students and they i'm amazed how they can find scholarships mm. How can they they can find scholarships? And the most important thing is that when they write to the to the school and say, "I want to apply for a scholarship," I'm from, mm -hmm. from etc. etc. They really like to have diverse faculty, uh, diverse student lineup in in the university. Like I have a friend whose daughter just left for University of Amsterdam, mm -hmm. full scholarship in psychology. But you know she has to learn how to speak Dutch. But right. she will learn. She will learn. And then um, another one uh, is in Bergen, University of Bergen, and she's also finishing her master's mm -hmm. in education. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel that um, I feel that. Can, sorry, I'm so sorry. Can you hear that? Yeah. I'm sorry. No worries. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's, Somebody's calling. calling you. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, I'm so sorry. I think that's my son abroad. Um, okay. So yeah. going back, I just think you have to be very vigilant in looking for scholarships. Mm -hmm. And and also, I, the, um, the student 
the student um, office or mm -hmm. the guidance office because they have a lot of brochures um, that are being given out and a lot of schools uh, are opening their doors to people who are offering scholarships and mm -hmm. I know um, having financial difficulty or uh, not being not being able to support um, uh, you, you know your child to a good education it, it I think education is how you make it okay? mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you remember uh, Vice President Pelias mm -hmm. um, he was no. also yeah, 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 you were not born yet. <laughs> but at the time, he was the classmate of my father. And okay. uh, uh, Vice President Manuel Pelaez went to Pamantasan na Maynila, a not very well-known university, mm -hmm. and he took up his law. And when he graduated and took the bar, um, he was the, he was number one in the bar. Mm -hmm. So Pamantasan of, of Manila was, mm -hmm. was known. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, so it's really not what school you come from, but it's also the education that you have had. And mm -hmm. also a lot, for me, a lot of mentors, a lot of support groups. Um, I, I always believe that you can apply for scholarships. 50% mm -hmm. is better than none, correct? Right. Like yeah. La, Salle is offering, La Salle is offering 50% and above. Depending, oh, wow. on, yeah, to mm -hmm. deserving students and a lot of schools in Manila Ateneo. Uh, I think even you, your UP is free, you know, but yeah. that's another story. And then UST also, and okay. all the other, all the other wonderful universities here in, in, in Manila have scholarship programs. Mm -hmm. So I, I really believe in scholarships programs, I, I really believe in um, private institutions that have educational um, portfolios for mm. people who want to, to study and also like for example uh, overseas in around Southeast Asia like mm. Sophia University uh, Nanyang University in um, in Singapore mm -hmm. or University of Hong Kong mm -hmm. or uh, all of them have scholarships so you just have to apply and if you if you make it you're in Mm -hmm. and, and of course um there's some that you say you know I'm, we're not those so smart etc but i think being resilient and being um you know having this can do attitude or you know try your very best attitude is so much better than um, saying i can't do it and so i won't go to school that's right. So I heard a few things, Teacher Marika, especially for parents. I heard that, you know, economics should not be a hindrance in yes. going for uh, the education or the kind of education that you want to have, yes. right? Because there are a lot of help out there, such as scholarships, right? And yes. then the other thing that I heard is that at the end of the day, it's really what you make out from your educational experiences that's really going to help you you know become a successful person much like to yes, your yes. um example about the the former vice president of the philippines yes. Pilaes, which and who you actually don't know and now i know so thank you for sharing in terms of <laughs> yes that. yes uh, yeah. yeah so teacher maricar you also yes, mentioned yes. a few educational um, thought leaders, yeah, and yes. thought leaders earlier. Yes, yes. And yes. before we take a break, I just want to uh, repeat uh, some of the names that you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are watching, especially in the Philippines, uh, Carl Dweck, she is the mm -hmm. author of Growth Mindset. Mm -hmm. um, we heard from Teacher Marie Carr a few things earlier about the not yet go and read that book it has been a game changer in terms of uh, my perspective regarding being stuck and now you know really um a chance for all of us to really continue to grow yes. right yes. and then you also mentioned about sir ken robinson earlier yes yes, um, yes, yes. I've been trying to remember the name of the book, the first book that I read that he wrote. It was wonderful. 
Yeah, I know. But you, you can see him in TED Talk. Um, yes. TED yeah. Talks. Yeah, on the YouTube. It's really yeah. nice. It's very nice. And uh, Howard Garner. Most Howard of Garner, of course. Hands down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, folks, uh, you know, if you are watching this, make sure later on that you search those three education thought leaders and learn about them. It's great to really understand their philosophies on education. And that could actually, or it may help you as a parent, if you're a parent and as an education leader, it may help you even become uh, clear in terms of your philosophy on education. All right. Thank you. So teacher Mari Carr, uh, yes. when we come back, I would Thank like you. to actually talk about passion versus strength. So why don't we take a break? And then when we come back, let's talk about that. All right. Thank you. All right. See you in a bit. Juan Lu and his puppets face to face with special guests Makata Tawanan, Jess Box, and the Lunaria Marionette Show. Alam mo nito lok kung wala ako hindi ka magsasalita. Alam mo tito Juan Lu kung wala ako nagsasalita ka nagisa. <laughs> kung wala ako wala kang masusuot. Kung wala ako wala kang nakakain. <laughs> October 30, Sunday, 7 p.m. at the Levedad Auditorium in Apalit, Pampanga. Buy your tickets now and see you soon, face to face. Welcome back. All right. Before we took a break earlier, we were talking about 
um, how the parents of Tisha Marie Carr really help her find her true calling in life, which is really about education. And now we're going to bring her back because I want to ask her a few more questions. This time, I want to ask her in terms of passion versus the strength, or how do you find your passion, or do you follow your passion, or do you follow your strength? right so with it without further ado let me bring her back all right teacher marie car hello hi welcome back teacher thank marie car thank you okay yes. so let's oh. talk yeah let's talk about finding your passion or finding your strength which one do you believe so say for example i am a 16 year old in the philippines or maybe no longer maybe 18 na ngayon, right because they changed it to k to 12. but when i was yes. uh, going to college i was 16. Ooh. really i was 16 when i went to college right so for those who are um trying to find their way around or you know trying to figure out what they want to major in college which one should they follow? Should they follow and find their passion first? Or should they try to find their strength? What are your thoughts okay. in terms of that? Okay. First of all, um, education now is so different from when we were growing up or when you were still here in Manila. Um, I see the changes uh, about, okay. um, you know, how easy it is to go to school, especially with all your gadgets, etc. I mean, you, um, education 5.0 is anywhere, anytime, anyhow, any place. I mean, you can really learn on your mm -hmm. own if, you, if you're if you're very much uh, you know in control with what you want to do. Um, right. But but uh, as also as um, a parent, mm -hmm. I also try to see the other side of what is. Um, you know what really pushes my children or my or my or my son um my, my son and my daughter to do what they wanted to do um okay. my um my daughter is an artist she's a muralist um nice. but um when she was growing up she said mom do i really have to go to a school that has all of the grades and all of i said yeah you have to you have no choice and but she said but um I, but do I need to be trained how to be an artist? I said, mm. yes. Mm. An artist needs as much training like a doctor. You need right. to start from, from basic, from basic theories and concepts, etc. You should also have a mentor that you look up to. And so she was, she started painting at 10. And so wow. now she, and now she's, um, she's a muralist. She makes a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, wonderful pictures and she was also um last year she was working with louis vuitton as nice. the first in-house artisan painter for the for the trunks in, in okay. manila yes. yeah yeah but it's really amazing i said it that, that that job just fell on her on her lap but i guess after one year she said mom i need to go back to my mural painting i said okay you go for it and so um and then and then i realized i realized that it's really your strength that you mm -hmm. you have to bring out right her strength mm -hmm. is in her art okay mm -hmm. and, but then if you if you only have the strength but if you don't have the passion mm -hmm. it doesn't work mm -hmm. so you have to have the passion there and mm -hmm. um that's also what i saw um that my husband you know graduated with a business degree but ended mm -hmm. up making bread and making okay. food and everything yeah. like that so i said he had the he had this the interest and he had the strength it's very good but the passion was mm -hmm. there that moved him to what he's doing right now so for me um as a parent i will not insist that you know that you have to do something that that uh, you know they will give you money of course everybody mm -hmm. wants to earn. Sure. I, mean, I mean please don't if anybody doesn't want to make money 
tell me why. <laughs> well, I don't know why. Everything, every, everything, every movement that we do in our lives, we have to pay. Even, right. You know what I mean? So, and it's it's a reality, but it does not doesn't. You don't have to make it as your end goal mm. to make it my end goal to be happy with with my work and mm. to be and to be paid for it. Okay? I love it, and that's and that's also what my I tell my children: be proud of your work, but you also yeah. have to charge, and you also have to you tell them this is how much I am worth. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, if you, if you don't, because it's very hard to find a rubric that says an artist costs this much. Yes, you know I mean, like Picasso did not say I am worth this much, and then or Manansala, who's a one of one of the most a famous um, Filipino artists, didn't say this is how much it costs. Mm -hmm. Amor Solo also didn't say, mm -hmm. but my God, look at their paintings now. It's yeah. You know, yeah, but they just started slowly because mm -hmm. they were passion with painting, and then they also and I uh, and you uh, we're in passion with our work in education, and I really believe that uh, people will say and you see that we're good at what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We always update ourselves. I mean, I'm sure you always read up, and I try to take up conferences and workshops every year. And le until COVID came, which I, I, that, I stayed home, um, but I still do online webinars, and I, I I try to. So passion and strength really go together. I love it's, it. Mm -hmm. um, it's really um, a tandem. Mm -hmm. It's a tandem. Mm -hmm. Without your strength, you can't find your passion. Without a passion, without strength, also does not really find the correct fit. And people can say, I have to have it right now. You cannot have it. It takes the gift of time is the best. Mm -hmm. Give yourself time, especially now. Give yourself time to rest, to pause, you know, reca recalibrate, you know, re realign all, all, all the REs, uh, you know, re redirect, you know, mm -hmm. find because there are just so many things that are happening during the covid that mm -hmm. we were never prepared for mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean like i had classes face to face and all of a sudden i had to wing it giving <laughs> class yeah. online yeah. Mm -hmm. i mean that, that was really um that's why i had that's why i got to know about zoom i got to know about google classroom i got to mm -hmm. know about um the stream yard which i'm still having a hard time but it's okay i'm gonna get it and then um um there's just so many things that we had to adjust but it, mm -hmm. it did not stop us right it did mm -hmm. not stop us from continuing here we are talking about it and Good we're learning time. from it yeah oh mom ang galing niyo po that was really a wonderful and very wise advice ang galing galing yeah so folks those of you who are watching right now make sure that you take note of that passion and strength go hand in hand now teacher marika i have another question okay sure, sure. how do parents make sure naman that when their kids are pursuing their passions na hindi sila magugutom in the long run meaning they're not going to go hungry in the long run <laughs> i understand that i understand that completely so yeah. yeah. Um, so, one thing I've learned also from my my parents, etc. Mm -hmm. My father paid for tuition, and then yeah. um, that's it. So, and then my mother just gave a little bit, you know, in a few months, etc. But yeah. I took the initiative to find after school work. So, ah, I, I, um, what I did is that I I did babysitting. Mm -hmm. um, Long lecturing, and I also worked in the after school program in Bank Street. I took care of um, a class after three, mm -hmm. one to five, one to five, and then the money that I earned from, from the after school program, I told them to just pay it to my tuition. So it, yeah. it was okay. So I, I, yeah. I, I learned and I enjoyed it. And then, and then the other one was doing work, uh, 
you know, during the Christmas holidays, I was gift wrapping in, in, in the big stores in New York. And then the other thing also that I've learned is that um, in spite also of, you know, trying to find a racket or to make money, um, mm -hmm. is also just, just doing service. You don't really have to pay, but the mere mm -hmm. fact that you're offering service or reading, I, I, I was able to do some church work and mm -hmm. then there were some people there who were you know saying oh do you need some books for school i said yes i do so they said can you just give me the titles and then they bought it for me mm -hmm. so you know i said to myself you're very kind so i don't throw any books like i think my husband wants to kill me already because <laughs> my books are already 40 years old but they're still in my house so i said to myself books are precious mm. they're so precious for me um you should have a home library so that your children can see what books you read because yes. you, reading, you develop the skill and the joy of reading by modeling the behavior it's also like listening to music i mean i know it's so easy to go to spotify etc etc but the choice of music mm -hmm. is very Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, all I know is that um, in making money, God is amazing. It happens. Yes. Like yeah. when you pay, it comes. And yes. then when it's meant for you, it will be there. And of course, it. I really think that you should also work for it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Maybe there's there's a point in our lives or in my, our parents won't be there. So yeah. like now, you know, um, my, 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 my friends would say, why are you still teaching? Why? Because I, I like to work and I also, well, my pay is not so high, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> um, but, but I'm just so happy with the different people I'm able to meet in, in mm. my education field and, can, and help me do a lot of things, um, you know, that I'm proud of. Like um, mm -hmm. I worked with Kidzania. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that it's um entertainment um, mm -hmm. uh, group, and then I, I trained all their people for the floor. That's sad to say, amazing. because of the, mm -hmm. sad, sad to say, because of the COVID, they had to close. Um, oh, a lot, a lot of things closed down. That's also yes. what I feel so bad. So, um, mm -hmm. if there are any like you know, we I try to give free workshops with mm -hmm. some friends. And then opening it to public school teachers, and that's nice. also what we try to do. Because I can't go to school; I don't really mm -hmm. go out. You know? mm -hmm. not, I can reach people online, through Zoom, through text, like now, and mm -hmm. the money comes. I don't know; it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like mana, as they say, mana from heaven. It's really for <laughs> you. Really don't know; it just appears. Thank you. And, um, yeah. And of course, there's nothing wrong with um, uh, you know asking people for help, but not too much. I think um, for me, it's very important to try first on your own. And if mm. you, you can't, it's okay. Ask for help. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with asking for help. Mm -hmm. I it's love it. Of, it's not a sign of weakness. Yes. Uh, oh In my English. gosh. Yeah. That's wonderful, Teacher Marikar. I think when you love what you do, blessings come to you in many shapes and forms. And uh, I feel like uh, the things that you do, even at your age, giving free workshop, uh, free training. And by the way, folks, let's put it right there again on um, the bottom, uh, on the comments and on uh, right here on the screen. Let's put the uh, teacher Marikar's information here so that if any one of you, especially the public school teachers and principals, regional directors, uh, all of you, if you are looking for someone who will be sharing her knowledge on parenting mm -hmm. and education in general, here is how you can get in touch with teacher Marikar. There you go. MC Del Campo 80 at gmail.com. And remember earlier, I mentioned to you that she also has an Instagram. And there she is. Yes. You can also connect with her at 
Car de Ocampo. So make sure that you follow this legend. And I'm calling oh, her a legend because I feel like she has a lot of things to share. And can you believe, Teacher Maricar, it's been an hour since you and I have Oh my been God, we've been talking. Yes, we've been talking for an hour. I think we should have coffee together or a little bit of wine after. Yes, actually, I don't drink wine, but I drink coffee. So okay. <laughs> when I go to the Philippines, I'll make yes, sure. That please. Yes, please. Yes, I'll tell Miss Apple that we should meet. Yes. And thank you so much for inviting me and to be part of this. Um, I'm very, very uh, humbled, but also happy that I have met you. You are the next. You're our future. You're, you're going to be doing more of these things and i know the blessings will come because um yeah. you, you are you're doing what you love mm -hmm. and as you said because we love it replicates and it's like a rippling effect to to all the other things that we want mm -hmm. amen and teacher maricar before we go sure. can you share uh, one more inspiring stories to our okay. listeners Okay. Let's give them 10 extra minutes because this has been like an awesome conversation with you. So, Thank you so much. Yeah. So why, why don't you okay. share with us one more inspiring stories? Oh, one more uh, inspiring okay. story. Um, one, one story I want to share is that I helped a lot of people open their schools. Um, was uh, they said, Miss Maricar, I want to open the school. I said, sure. And then, how do we do it? He said, if I tell you how to do it, it's going to be my school. Yeah. But if we walk together in this journey, it is your school. And I can literally let, let go of your hand and you can go all the way forward and make your school a wonderful school. And I'm just so blessed that I i have worked with so many wonderful young people who are who have their own great schools and really you know they just call me up miss can i ask a, can i ask her sure you know i mean i'm never going to say no to people that i that i help mm -hmm. and, and i want them to pursue um you know all, all of all of the blessings that they're doing because they're helping young children and their parents mm -hmm. and the first school mm -hmm. that they will encounter is you know that's the schools of of of, of early childhood preschools right. like three and four and there's even infant toddler program that's so right. especially, especially now um it's very beans but you know with the daycare centers they have infant toddler but mm -hmm. even private schools mm -hmm. now have infant toddler program so mm -hmm. and with the, with the covid um there's a lot of people saying what should we do i said you know just follow the basic protocols and mm -hmm. just don't have if you can have your schools outdoors much much better but right. if you cannot have them have open all your windows and all the electric fans on etc and and let the kids enjoy and play i am also an advocate for play i really want to inform parents and and teachers and new teacher alpha that play is the most important thing in in the lives of children and also of human beings i agree I mean, yeah there's the institute of play in which i read um their their their, their philosophy is that from infancy all the way up to adulthood all the way up to my age we still have to, we still yes. have to enjoy because that is where when we are happy and when we have found what really, really makes us joyful is comes already the passion and comes already your strength. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you become a wonderful human. Mm. So I just hope that um, I'm able to share something about the people that I worked with and how you can affect them in the most positive way thank you um, thank you teacher maricar and to um sum it up you're right you know even at the, this stage in our lives play is very important 
Um, That's another story, right? I know it's another story, but anyway. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Maybe, you know, um, when I go to Manila, we can do like a live, uh, live Facebook, right, with you, and we can talk about play yes. and uh, um, how to really instill play among young kids all the way to adults because that's what we need in order to live a very good life. Amen. Yeah. So, Teacher Marikar, well, I guess this is it for now. Yeah. Thank and you so much. thank you. I applaud you for the work that you have done with many, many people around the Philippines through your consultancy. Um, uh, company through your uh, help, uh, um, especially those who are starting their schools, your knowledge, and you being an assistant professor for a long time at DLSU. That's amazing. Thank you. So, Thank yeah. You. May you continue to inspire young folks to pursue their passion. May you continue to have the, the strength good health and may you always be a blessing to everybody thank you thank you so much teacher alpha thank you my my pleasure being here you're welcome until next time teacher maricar thank you again and to all our viewers thank you for watching thanks for supporting once a teacher always a teacher um i'm glad that you are here with us today and i hope that you were able to really learn a lot from teacher Marikar today, especially if you are a parent. I've learned so much and I feel like I need to rewind this interview two or three times and really dial in to supporting your children or our children when it comes to their life's true calling. Until then, I'm your host, Alpha Sanford, and you're watching, and you watch, once a teacher, always a teacher. Good evening, good morning, mabuhay. Until next time. Bye for now.